Det är så du this past to London. Okay. Here you are, sir. Careful, the coffee is very hot. Thank you. would like to fly as low as possible over the island. Thanks. 
both to your own interests and internationally. This tape contains all the information I have on the subject. I know you'll recognize the urgency and act on it immediately. I'd like to have seen you myself, but it's imperative that I stay here. Good luck, Hugh. Good morning. Good morning. Lovely day, isn't it? Are you Mr. Wingard? Yes. Right. Mm -mm. Silly, Mr. Wingard. Very silly. Okay. <gasps> oh, poor Mr. Wingard. Drummond, you want it on the phone? <laughs> Excuse me. You, Drummond, yeah, you have a call for me. Hello, John. Don't you ever take a day off? What, about half an hour then? Okay. All right, bye-bye. I say, Drummond. Doesn't your group at Lloyd's ensure most of the Keller organization? It's a nasty business. And it's going to cost us a great deal of money. Well, it may sound ghoulish, but as it happens, it's going to make us a great deal of money. Huh. Venetian oil is almost certain to pick up Keller's concessions now. We've been after them for months, but Keller's always stood in our way. What is it, Peggy? Time for your medicine. Oh, Lord. Can I get you a drink, Mr. Drummond? Yes, have a drink. Ah, filthy muck. I think I'll have one, too. No, Sir John? No? No. Oh. Mr. Drummond? Later, perhaps. Very well. You're wasting your time. Peggy's a very well-brought-up girl. Father's a bishop. But in spite of her, I'm going to have a drink. They tell me you knew a fellow named David Wingard. Yes, I still do. Not anymore. He's dead. Good heavens. Ah, killed in the shooting accident. That doesn't sound like Wingard. He was a particularly careful man, especially about guns. This was a harpoon gun. He was uh, skin diving. Oh, now I know there's something fishy. He couldn't swim. What you've just told me confirms my own suspicions. Wingard worked for me, you know. Exploratory work on oil fields. Two days ago, I got this cable from him. Imperative contact Henry Keller immediately, matter life and death. Cable whereabouts. Wingard. And did you contact him? Never tried to contact a man like Keller. Ran his whole damn shooting match from that plane. I tried, but couldn't. Next thing I hear is this. And you think that uh, Wingard knew? Well, he must have known something. Mm. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Well, you're involved in two ways. First, the insurance on Keller's plane. Second, your friendship with Wingard. I'd appreciate it if you could find out what happened. Well, I'll try. Can I keep this? It's time for the Phoenician board meeting, Sir John. Right. It's a sick world, Hugh. Keller's dead. And because of it, do you know what I'll find round the Phoenician board table this morning? 
Nothing but a lot of happy, smiling faces. Please, gentlemen. Sir John? I say it's an obligation. No matter what has happened, Phoenician is committed to pay, and we shall have to do so. A million pounds? You'd seriously pay out a million pounds of the shareholders' money when you don't have to? They'd boot you out of the next meeting if you did, and quite right too. A million pounds was the figure agreed, Bridge North. And anyway, why all the fuss? You know what the Samarkand oil concession means to us. Exactly. If we don't clear six million net profit in the first 18 months, I'll resign. And about time, too. Now, let's look at this situation realistically, shall we? Three months ago, we, Phoenician Oil, were approached by the representative of an unknown private party who suggested that Keller's objection to merging his oil fields with ours could be overcome inside six months in exchange for a fee of one million pounds. Now, Keller's dead. The merger will go through and it needn't cost us a cent. And yet, two of our directors still want to pay out this million. Why? Because we have a contract. And when I make a contract, I stick to it. Rubbish. Well, yes? The young lady's here to see you now, sir. Thank you. Gentlemen, the other party's representative is here. Good. Let's get on with it. Good morning, Miss Aikman. Good morning. We have just been discussing what could be done about your proposition. But there's nothing to discuss, I'm sure. Mr. Keller no longer opposes the merger. Now you merely have to pay our fee. Thank you. We don't have to pay a cent. He didn't do anything. Keller's death was an act of God. Our contract did not call on us to do anything, gentlemen, except prove that Mr. Keller's opposition would be withdrawn before a specified date. Well, it has been withdrawn. She is absolutely right, you know. I think we should take a vote. Those who feel that we are obligated to pay this fee should signify in the usual way. Those in favor of payment. Thank you. Four. And those against? Five. I also am in favor of paying. You see, Miss Eckman, we're deadlocked. Very well, then. I shall convey your decision to my principal. And perhaps we can meet again tomorrow. Yes, there's a good lass. And why not have him come up here himself? We'd all like to meet him. I'm afraid that would be impossible. Good day. Thank you, Miss Eckman. Thank you. <laughs> A right little cracker, that one. Why can't we employ agents like her? Item five, gentlemen. Hi, Uncle Hugh. You're supposed to be in America. Yeah, well, something came up. What was she like? Angry. So was her father. You're not thinking of staying, are you? Well, I live here. Remember? Only well, when you're in London. So? I'm in London. And it's good to be home. You are pleased to see me. Well, well, well. I mean, you, you haven't rented my room or anything, have you? Well, that's a damn good idea. I wish I'd thought of it. <sighs> it's good to see you again, Uncle Hugh. What have you been up to? Oh, this and that. That? Miss Ashenden, my nephew, Robert. How do you do? Hello, Miss Ashenden. Or may I call you... Miss Ashenden will be fine. Hey, uh, look, if this is business or something... We've finished. We have? Well, then, uh... Maybe I should take the lady home. That won't be necessary. Well, we can't have you walking the streets alone. I never do. Hugh is driving me, aren't you, darling? Come home and good evening. 
Mr. Bridgenorth. How did you get in? Who gave you that? What do you want? Think you can get round me, eh? Can't I? No. How very disappointing. And I thought I'd found a real man in you, Mr. Prisoner. Wait a minute. There's no need to be hasty. You could always try persuading me. Do you think I... Uh... Succeed? I'll try. Bridge North? Could have been very nice, Mr. Bridgeford. But now you're paralyzed. You can see and you can hear and you can feel. But you can't move and you can't talk. Oh, poor Mr. Bridge North. You see, it is a nasty old drug she carries in her ring. It only lasts just a few minutes. And doesn't leave any traces at all. Isn't that clever? The police will think you've committed suicide. Penelope, take his feet. Bye-bye, Mr. Bridge North. Well, I have had men fall for me before, but never like this. Good morning, Miss Eckman. Good morning. Well, now, I have conveyed the news of your deadlock to my principal, but unfortunately he does insist that the contract must be honored and his fee paid. Oh, well, uh, I see that our main objector is not here today. Well, in that case, perhaps, gentlemen, you would care to vote again? I really don't think it's as simple as that. Pay the girl. Am I to take that as a proposal? Sir John's right. Do pair before someone else falls from a 15-story building. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might strike Mr. Weston's last remark from the record. Those in favour of paying? You may tell your principal the money will be paid as per contract. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Ah, Signor Drummond. Yes, who are you? Carlogio, sir. I was Signor Wingard's servant. You can come inside. 
Would you like a drink? I was sorry to hear about Senior Wingard. Oh, well, you know? Mm. Who tell you? Sir John Bledlow had a cable from the police at Castellamale. The police? They're no good. When I tell them about the tape recording, they just laugh. What tape recording? All that morning, Senor Wingard talked into his tape machine. It's very important, he says. I come back from the market and find him dead. But there is no tape. There is only this. Nothing else? When the tape was pulled from the machine, this little piece was torn off. And you brought these things to me because of this address? Si, senor. The whole tape was to come to you. It was arranged by Senor Winger before he died. Carlojo, he said to me, I want you to go to London with a very important package for Senor Drummond. You make sure you give it to him and nobody else. Now he's murdered, and the tape that was the package is gone. But still I come. Pay the ruler and the act. Made the ruler and the act. Well, there's not enough here to make any sense. I may want to fly back with you, see if I can find out what's going on. Where are you staying? I stay with my cousin. Here is his address in Camden Town. You want me to drive you? Grazie. There's no need. I'm meeting him. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Colonel. Yeah? Made the ruler and the act. Made the ruler and the act. Oh, excuse me, please. Could you direct me to Montpellier Square? I'm sorry, I'm a stranger. <laughs> Funny little man, to come all this way. Hmm. Yeah, and our job is to find out why. We'll find out. Won't we, little man? Hmm? Do you have to play around with everything? Really, now? Made the ruler and the act. The ruler and the act. What's an act? I don't know. A ruler sounds indigestible enough, but an act? Who ate them? Shut up, Wayne. The ruler and the act. Uncle Hugh. For goodness sake, stop calling me Uncle. You, old man. Hugh is sufficient. Hey, I was just wondering, are you going to be in tonight? Why? Just wondering. Entertaining? Kind of. What kind of? You know. I'm simply trying to find out whether I should put the breakables away or not. Last time you had a party, it cost me a great deal of money. Hey, no, nothing like that. No large young men panting hotly all over the furniture. Just me. Hmm. Well, try and get her out before daylight. I don't want the place to get a bad name. <laughs> Who taught you to play? Chess. Yeah. Sir John. Well, he's a good teacher. He's too careful. Not bold enough in attack. My boldness is a refinement of my own. Right, sit down. Check. Ah, a bad move. Good evening, Mr. Drummond. And Miss Ashenden. Good evening, Mr. Weston. Does Sir John know that you're playing games with Mr. Drummond? I'm sure he will in the morning. Ah, not from me, dear lady. Not from me. I was sorry to hear about Bridge North. Yes, that was most unfortunate. May I? Do. Did you know him well? Only by reputation. Excuse me, sir. Your guest is here. Perhaps we can finish it another time. Excuse me. No, oh, my dear. Shall we play another game? Chet. I'll take you home. Yours or mine? Yours. Rob's got company. You lay a finger on me, Robert Drummond, and I'll bite it off. No, 
Now, Brenda, stop playing hard to get. I am hard to get. But it's worth the effort. <laughs> I'd like another drink, please. I do all sorts of things when I'm tired. Specially bottled for Hugh Drummond Esquire. I'd like to meet your uncle. No, you wouldn't. He's old. But I like older men. Not that old. I bet your uncle doesn't behave like this. Oh, yes, he does. Really? And him being so old, too. He's got a good memory. Now, Brenda. <laughs> the door. Mm, I know. Aren't you going to answer it? Mm, they'll go away. I'll go. Might be someone fascinating. We could have a party. Good evening. Does Mr. Drummond live here? He does. I have a package for him. Perhaps you'd be kind enough to see he gets it. Oh, of course. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Satisfied? It's for you. Mm. Who's sending me cigars? It's for my uncle. Can I have one? One. A cigar. Of course not. Why shouldn't women smoke cigars? It's not ladylike. They make me feel sexy. Look like a fallen woman. Well, I haven't fallen yet. Let me give you a push. Oh, no, I promised to stay out this evening, but you didn't need to shoot at me. It was her cigar. Catch your girlfriend, Robert. I think she's going to faint. What shall I do with her? Now put her on the bed and loosen her. Now put her on the bed. Your bed. Smoke too much, these young girls. Hello? This is Hugh Drummond. I'd like to see Mr. Boxer. Mm, tonight. All right. I'm on my way. Yeah. Mr. Drummond is here. 
सिंधी में चुप चुप Come in, you. Sit down. Nice to see you. Hello, boxer. Mm. I never did like those tourist beaches. Oh. There. Is that better? Instant vacations, eh? Only sort I can get. I've been officially dead for three years. Uh, want a drink? You're a dead man. You're making an awful lot of money. Well, even dead men have to live. <sighs> Getting old, though. Only the clean trade interests me these days. Well, no more drugs or girls. A bank here, train there. All good clean fun, and who misses it? <laughs> the insurance companies. Not yours, though. Never yours. What's on your mind? Old-fashioned murder. Y who? When? Max, <laughs> I don't want anybody killed. I want to find a killer. Ah. Who's been killed? Killer. Chap called Henry Bridgenorth and David Wingard. David? What, the David we knew in the army? Mm. And tonight, I received a box of cigars. And a 2 2 slug inside each one of them, and a very neat firing mechanism. Yeah. Doesn't ring a bell. I'll have to check. I've got Hugh Drummond with me. We're old buddies. Anything I have is his. Yeah. He wants to know who killed a mutual friend, David Wingard, old Henry Keller, and a Mr. Rich North. Bridge North. Yeah, also, who sent him a box of cigars? Loaded ones. Yes, sir. We keep up-to-date records and everything. Well, you have to. Chicago, New York, Beirut, Hong Kong. Yeah, I've even got my own private hot wire to Moscow. <laughs> and what we haven't got on file, we can get by teletype the same day. Korea? You're a sentimentalist, boxer. No, digging that tunnel was the only honest work I ever did in my life. <laughs> you were a lousy escaper. We escaped, didn't we? Yeah? We have records of Keller and Bridgenorth. Both accidents, it says here. Nothing on Wingard at all. The cigars were bought from the Old Gate bomb specialist by a bird. No information on the bird, except she was a looker. That's it, Huey boy. I'll call you if I hear any more. Yeah, it sounds to me as if you're up against a lone wolf, and that can be rough. Well, thanks a lot. And, uh, you stay alive, huh? You too, Huey boy. Oh, uh, ask the uh, young lady to come down again, will you? The young lady. Uh, I think we're up to the back, darling. Uh, that's it. What's the matter? Aren't the odds good enough for you anymore? with you, my friend. You're breaking my legs. Yeah, that's exactly what I intend to do. Now, let me out! Let me out! Who sent you? 
A woman, some woman. She paid us. She told us to kill you and make it look like a mugging. What woman? I never saw her before. She contacted me and I got hold of the others. She never told us nothing about it. She just paid us and, and told us what to do. I think I'll break your legs anyway. And this girl is all I know. I never saw her before. Better look after your friend. I think his feet are killing him. What are you doing there? Ah. Uh, well, she decided she didn't want to go home. And she didn't want to... Well, I like sleeping on the couch. Well, how is she? Oh, she's fine. Asleep. No, I'm not. Is this your uncle, Robert? Uncle Hugh, this is Brenda. Hello, Brenda. Hello, Uncle Hugh. How are you feeling? I feel fine now. Can I have a drink? Here, I'll get it. I'll get it. Well, night, Uncle. Night, Robert. She's upset. Well, that makes two of you. Night. Why don't you uh, try putting the chair under the handle? Oh, all right. Good night. Good night. I can't seem to fix this chair. Would you like me to do it for you? Would you? Mm. With pleasure. Sneaky for creeping off like that in the middle of the night. Well, it's understandable. She had a rough night, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, you, old man. Uh, you. I, uh... No, I'm not going out tonight. You'll have to let your urges run wild somewhere else. No, it's not that. Uh, you couldn't loan me a hundred quid, could you? No. What for? Well, I wanted to buy some warm weather clothes. I've got an invitation. Where to? Well, this friend of mine has got a yacht, and he's cruising all around the Mediterranean. You mean you might be leaving? I'm afraid so. I'm sorry. I'm going to leave this blank. Just fill it in for whatever you want. Oh, thank you. I'll pay you back, of course. Any time. Oh, where's the best place to go? Well, I always go to Spindles in Knightsbridge. Oh, is Pogo going to be proud of me? Who's Pogo? He's the guy with the yacht. See ya. Drummond? Hello, John. Where, the Pan-Arabian Oil Building? All right, I'll be there. Bye. Oh. Hey, why don't you look where you're... Oh. Excuse me, I... let me let me give you a hand. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, it's my fault. My fault. Thank you. Hey, is, is that yours or mine? It's mine. Oh, no, no, it's not. Hey, I got a great idea. My car's right here. Why don't we just lump everything in the back and go someplace where we can sort it out properly? What a lovely idea.
Constable's proposal is a very simple one, gentlemen. Your company would like to acquire the oil rights in Agmata on a royalty basis. That is right. The new king, however, proposes to develop them himself, actually in competition with your interests in that area. My principal believes he can arrange for you to be granted the rights within three months. Providing you pay him a fee of one million pounds. Miss Ekman? Thank you. My principal estimates the main Akmata field will yield a minimum of 90,000, and I repeat, 90,000 barrels a day. The first year's profits will not be less than 12 million pounds, with an expansion to adjacent fields. As I said before, gentlemen... Is it as hard as that to get a concession in Akmata? I would have said impossible. Every major company is after it, but the king is determined to work the fields himself. Well, how's her boss think he's going to get him to change his mind? Heaven knows. Short of bloodshed. Of course, if someone should assassinate the king. What you say? I said if someone should assassinate the king. Assassinate the ruler, and the act martyr concession is yours. Assassinate the ruler, and the act martyr concession. Eat the ruler, and the act. What are you raving about? <laughs> Sorry, John, I think I just solved a problem. Mr. Weston? Miss Ekman, may I ask what guarantee we have that your principal... Is that the Weston on your board? He sits on half a dozen boards. He's a very good man. Well, he could soon be a very dead one. Tell me, how can I have a look at this Ekman character? Well, I should think the best way is to look through the door. As I've said before, gentlemen, the million pounds will only be payable if my principal is successful in getting you what you want. If he isn't, no fee. Thank you, that is all I have to say today. When's the meeting break up? Oh, any time now. You get Weston in here? Well, I can try. It only remains for me to thank Miss Ekman for coming to us with this very interesting proposition. And to say that it'll get all our attention and we'll communicate with her when we have reached a decision. Will you excuse me? Well, John, what's it all about? Look, Weston, a little friendly advice. Stay clear of Ekman. What? If I were you, I'd choose my dinner companions rather more carefully. Uh, that is, unless you want to wind up with something more painful than indigestion. What the devil is he talking about? you know and I would much rather be nice to you but Eggman will be back soon and she would be absolutely livid if you haven't talked so be a good boy please mm -hmm. tell me all about Carlojo and your uncle That is a very untidy job, Penelope. Very untidy. Has he talked yet? He won't tell me anything. Of course not. Now get dressed, we have to leave. Oh, what a shame. Just as we were getting to know each other. Get dressed, I said, Penelope. 
And I told you before not to wear my negligee. Oh, I didn't think you'd mind. I do mind. Now you have to hurry it up. We have one more job to do before we catch the plane. And that is mine too. Oh, sorry. Penelope, one of these days your light fingered habits are going to get you into deep trouble. kind of thing, Robert. Mm. Oh, don't struggle. You'll choke yourself. Mm. Oh, that's a nasty burn. Mm. You really ought to learn how to control your girlfriends, eh? Mm. That was my foot, you know. Mm. That's it, mm. Mr. Mm. That's a time clock, you know. Mm. Good for me, too. Mm. Mm. Now, mm. here, let's have this off you. That's bad. I don't think I'll ever forgive you for that. There's ingratitude for you. After I saved your life. You didn't. I died back there at five seconds to zero. Mm, you don't look too good. Huh? I'll drop you at the hospital and pick you up in half an hour. Where are you going? I see a chap called Weston. When he gets himself killed. Mr. Weston, please. I'm very sorry, urgent. Mr. Weston's engaged. But I say that's very rude. Ekman. I got downstairs, they disappeared, of course. Well, they're pretty smooth operators, that's for sure. What happens now? Well, bed for you. Then you better tell me how to get in touch with that friend of yours. Which friend? Oh, Banjo, or whatever you call him. Pogo. What for? Well, we can't have you gallivanting around the Mediterranean looking like that. you will scare the girls to death. Well, you can get in touch with him through the embassy. Which embassy? Akmata. Just say you have a message for King Fedra. Pogo? Well, that's what we called him at Princeton. Tell me, where were you going to pick this yacht up? A place called, uh, Castellamale. That's where Wingard was killed. All right, my boy. Castellamale it is. Would you enter, please? You are fortunate, sir. Very, very, very fortunate. We are very fortunate. It was rented for three months, but the tenant had the slightly fatal accident. Most unfortunate for him, but most fortunate for you, because this desirable residence is now empty. What about that desirable residence? Ah, the Castello. <laughs> Magnifico. It belonged to uh, Mr. Peterson. Yes, Carl Peterson. A very rich gentleman with many beautiful things. And the ladies. <laughs> 
mamma mia. <laughs> the ladies. Up there in the castello are the most beautiful ladies I have ever seen. But on to business. You will see we are furnished in the grand style. Everything of the best and almost new. Now, oh, oh, who did such a thing and why? No, 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 no. Uh, you can't stay here. I, I will find something anywhere. I like uh, it here. Uh, no, no, I want to stay uh, here. You check out it. Molto bono. I see. Magnifico. Uh, no, no, now you find somebody to uh, bring the bags up uh, and somebody to clean up, and don't worry, I'm eminently satisfied. Charming. Charming. I'm glad we're eminently satisfied. You recognize that? Ooh, vividly. Hmm. Penelope was here. What were they looking for? Well, if you'd stolen a very valuable tape recording, when you played it, there was a piece missing. You want to find that piece, wouldn't you? Ah, ate the ruler and the act. Right. It's a grim-looking place, isn't it? Hmm, but interesting. Well, you bet. All those beautiful girls? Mm. No, but whoever lives up there has been watching us through a telescope ever since we got here. Salams are out of date. Ma chi mi paga per questo, eh? Ah, you remembered. Well, welcome aboard, Mabruka. Boy, this king business has really gone to your head. Where's the harem? Oh, I didn't think there was a need for that. You didn't think what? Well, we managed all right without a harem in America, didn't we? <laughs> yes, we did, Pogo. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Pogo, this is my uncle Hugh Drummond. Hugh, Pogo. How do you do, Mr. Drummond? Roberts told me a great deal about you. Your company insures our new airline, doesn't it? That's right, sir. We've struck oil, Mr. Drummond. A big field. And all the oil companies in the world are chasing after me for a deal. But they're not going to get it over my dead body. Mm. Some people seem to be taking that last remark literally, sir. You mean it, don't you, Mr. Drummond? Yes, I do. I suppose it's possible. We Middle Eastern monarchs seem to have a pretty precarious existence. No point in shortening the odds there. No, there isn't. Are you talking generally or in particular? In particular. I see. When and where? I don't know that. Or how? That I don't know either. But if past experience is anything to go by, It'll be a well-contrived accident. Good afternoon, Mr. Drummond. Yes. Mr. Carl Peterson would be honoured if you'd have dinner with him at the castle this evening. 7.30? Tell Mr. Peterson I'd be delighted. What about Pogo's party? Well, I have to give it a miss. But you go and stick close to him, huh? <laughs> with his travelling companions, that'll be a pleasure.
a drumming, aren't you? I am. We're friends of Pogo's. He's giving a party. He sent us both to fetch you. Did he now? Hey, you. I'm going to the party. Hey, come on. Aren't you coming? No, I'm afraid not. Oh, please. No, I get my clothes wet. Let's go. Welcome, Mr. Drummond. Domo Rikatu. Kono tokorori no hono katani o ai dekati koedis. Dozo kuchirai. Mr. Drummond is here. Nihongo ga totemo jōzu desu wa? Hello, Drummond. I thought you'd never get here. I would have been here sooner, but I stayed in London for your cremation. I'll return the compliment. I'll make a point of going to yours. Mutsuko says that you speak very good Japanese. You're a man of wide accomplishments, Drummond. And so are you, it seems, Weston. Uh, Peterson. Which is it? Peterson. Carl Peterson. Weston's dead, long live Peterson. Hmm? By the way, who is dead? That little man who worked for Wingard, Carl Agio. Mm hmm. Your health, Drummond. It had occurred to me that I might not be able to persuade you up here. And then I reasoned that your curiosity would probably get the better of your judgment. Well, you were right. I usually am. Doesn't it worry you that I might whip out a gun and blow your block off? <laughs> no. In the first place, there's too much you want to know. And in the second, you don't have a gun. There's a metal detector just inside the front door, which would have sounded an alarm if you'd been armed. And anyway, our sort don't carry guns. We use this to get what we want. And I assume you have got what you want. It is rather charming, isn't it? Oh, so cosy. You must uh, allow me to show you the rest of it. You will stay for the weekend, of course. Uh, no, I haven't brought my pyjamas. My dear fellow, everything in this house is yours for the asking. Isn't it, Anna? Yours for the asking, Drummond. Well, thanks a lot, but I prefer to roll my own. <laughs> what I like to call my operations room. It's the nerve center of my organization. I have others, of course, but this is the one I choose to use at present. Mr. Peterson. Yes, Magda. The American stock has fallen two points. Should we start buying soon? No, it'll drop another 10 tonight. The president of the company is due to commit suicide about now. There's no better way of devaluing stock than to have the president of the company blow his brains out. Or 
crashes private aircraft. Ah, Keller. Phoenician wanted an oil concession. I got it for them, that's all. Would you like to lead the way? <laughs> Beauty and the Beast, what? Huh? <laughs> You've met Grace, of course. She's one of our new girls. There are certain things they have to learn before I send them out to work. Chang there teaches them self-defense. Chang, come and shake hands with Mr. Drummond. Sorry if I upset the hired hand. Even bad help is hard to come by these days. <laughs> Dinner in half an hour, Chang. You'll join us, my dear. We must arrange a proper match between you and Chang someday. He's a black belt, you know. Hmm. Well, you'd better tell him to use it to keep his pants up with, then. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly lethal collection. Like the young women you seem to have around here. <laughs> My operations cover a wide sphere. In Japan, I use Mitsuko. Tanya and Remy are in Brazil just now. Gerd is in Germany. And Anna here looks after India. It really becomes quite difficult to keep track of them all sometimes. Mm, but you'll manage. <laughs> I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to have someone to talk to again. Someone outside my own circle, that is. Your friend Wingard was the last. Capital chess pair. Very intelligent man. Not intelligent enough, sir. On the contrary, like yourself, too intelligent. He became inquisitive, irritating. But it was a nuisance, you know. But then it brought you here, so it has its compensations. Oh, my dears. Mr. Drummond, Miss Ekman. How do you do? And our little Penelope. Hello. Mm. Our little Penelope has already made contact with my nephew. Such a handsome young man. Yes, you made quite an impression on him, too. Really? <clears throat> <laughs> you see, Drummond, in big business, huge sums of money depend on the ability of one man. Competitors fight in every way they know to bring that man down. They employ complicated and expensive methods. Stock deals, market rigging, price cutting. It never entered anyone's head that there was a far simpler way of getting what one wanted. Until you came along. My method is simplicity itself. If a man stands in your way, dispose of that man. And how do you propose to dispose of King Vedra? An accident, of course. Shipboard explosion, all hands lost at sea, splendid obituaries in the Times. And I shall be a million pounds the richer. Ekman? Yes, Carl. Now, Mr. Drummond, we must make sure that nobody expects you home this evening. Magda. Yes, Miss Ekman? Mr. Drummond would like to speak to his nephew aboard the Royal Yacht. Yes, Miss Ekman. Make the call as simple as possible. We can cut it off from here. Mr. Robert Drummond is waiting. Hello, Robert. Hi. Enjoying yourself? Oh, yeah, swinging. Where are you speaking from? I'm up at the castle. I've been invited to spend the weekend. Oh? Is everything all right, then? Oh, fine. Well, I think Pogo will probably be upset. He took quite a shine to you. Well, people sometimes do. Take care of yourself. Hello? You? Chang, offer Mr. Drummond a cigar. Oh, let me. Hmm. Corona, Corona. No, I don't think I will. My friends tell me they're not very good for your health. <laughs> I do like a man who can retain his sense of humor. Mm, it is rather comical, isn't it? What is it? I mean, the whole thing. The girls. 
castle Fu Manchu over there. Even you, I suppose. My dears, Mr. Drummond is trying to provoke me. He can provoke me any time. You always did have the morals of an alley cat, Penelope. Yes, because I like mine. No, dear. You like anything, just as long as it isn't yours. I like what... What exactly is it that you find so amusing? Well, the whole thing's so theatrical, isn't it? I mean, I grant the girls have got some conceivable purpose, but what about old fatso over there? What's he for? I advise you to be careful, Drummond. Chang's English is very good. Well, it's more like say about his butling. He slops coffee in the saucer, he's ugly as sin, and his breath smells like the bottom of a parrot cake. No, Chang! Oh. I don't know what you hope to achieve by this, Drummond, but I advise you to stop it. No, Carl, dear. Let him go on. It should be rather amusing. And what about that ridiculous sword thing? What's that for? Picking those rotting teeth with? Start letting fly with those things, we'll all end up spattered over the furniture, Peterson. Now, you don't honestly think that you can fight your way out of here armed with just that. I can make an impressive dent in your skull trying. I don't advise it. <laughs> Always ready to take advice. A sensible decision. And now, before tempers get frayed, I think we all should be thinking of bed. I know someone who already is. Miss Ekman. We'll see you to your room. Good night, Carl. Hey! Next time you're in London, allow me to recommend you to a good dentist, huh? warm for you, is it? Shall I open the window? Oh, I wouldn't do that. It's electrified. Really? Good heavens. You're absolutely right. It's most kind of you to have mentioned it, Miss Eckman. Well, I didn't want you to get killed. At least, not yet. You're saving me for some wild little torture of your own, huh? Not torture. I'm just rather soft-hearted. And I want you to die happy. Huh? Do you, um, find me attractive? Do you like my body? Well, it's not bad. A little bit muscular, perhaps, but then you've got to expect that with the violent sort of exercise you take. To your health. Well, I don't know that that's quite the appropriate toast under the circumstances. Unless... Miss Eggman. Yes? Come and sit on the bed and let's have a friendly chat. Can you help me to get out of here? Hmm? But I couldn't possibly. Carl would kill me. No. What if I was here to protect you? Think of the wonderful times we could have together, Miss Eggman. Um, darling, by the way, what is your first name? Emma. Mm -hmm. That's an absolutely super name. And would you really take care of me? Day and night, and especially at night. After all, you'd have saved my life. 
Can you promise that everything will work out all right? Well, we can but try. Mm. How do you think we can do it? I'll tell you that later. Now, don't talk anymore and kiss me. Tell your boyfriend that though I enjoyed his dinner, I really couldn't face the dessert. You are unnatural. Hey, you forgot your pants. Didn't he come? I want to kill him, Carl, please. So you shall, dear, when I say so. This man is utterly and completely... Hello. A anything good on the telly? <sighs> You've got to admit, he's a dish. This is my lighter. Is it? Carl. I'm sick and tired of having her pick up everything that takes her fancy. Now, would you please tell this little... Now, just look at that. I've got to talk to you. Please, you must listen to me. All right. I can't take any more of this. Oh, you should have thought of that before you came here. I didn't volunteer. My father was a chemist. Peterson tricked him, used him in a dope deal. And if you hadn't come here, Peterson would have had him sent to prison, is that it? Not anymore. Why? My father died two weeks ago. He killed himself. Can you phone out of here to my nephew? No. Only Ekman and Peterson can use the phone. Hmm. Better leave it with me. And you better get out of here before they miss you. Our problem has always been to get close enough to the king so that the bomb we use is 100% effective. But with this new plastic explosive, a few ounces of which could blow up this whole building, and with grace, we have a solution. <gasps> I don't like changing plans, but this... Meet me in the laboratory in half an hour. This needs a woman's touch. All right. Me too. You make sure that Mr. Drummond gets a good night's sleep. The treatment. The treatment.
Have a good night. It was a knockout. <laughs> I debated whether I should allow you to awake at all. But like all artists, I work better when there's someone to appreciate what I'm doing. May I? Of course. Your nephew seems to be enjoying himself. Mm. He has a great capacity for self-indulgence. Unlike you, he'll grow out of it. I doubt if he'll have the time. Now, how about a game of chess while we're waiting? What are we waiting for? Twelve o'clock. That's when, for the want of a better expression, the balloon goes up. One for me, one for you. I'll set the board. Black and white to opening positions. Age of computers, Drummond. Courtesy of a shipping company that failed when its chairman died. Lost at sea, no doubt. Precisely. Now, if you'd like to take white and open the game, just tell the computer the move you want to make and it will do the rest. King's pawn to king four. King's pawn gambit. Orthodox reply. King's pawn to king four. <laughs> King's knight to King's bishop three. Where are your two little charmers this morning? In the village. Queen's knight to Queen's bishop three. Queen's knight to Queen's bishop three. Grace is with them. She has the place of honor in this morning's business. That surprises you after last night's cozy little scene in the bathroom? If it's any consolation to you, she meant what she said. She's taking part in today's events without her knowledge. King's Knight to King's Bishop Three. Doesn't it worry you that she might object when she finds out? When she finds out, it'll be too late. She won't be there anymore. Neither will King Fedra, nor the yacht, nor, I'm sorry to say, your beloved nephew. Just a great big hole in the water. I gather that Grace is carrying the bomb, then. My dear Drummond, Grace is the bomb. Hmm, I've always wanted a yacht like that. Seems a pity to blow it up, doesn't it? If we don't get moving soon, it won't be blown up. That's right. Now, Grace, you're a very lucky girl, you know. Mr. Peterson doesn't usually give anyone a second chance, so try to earn it. Penelope and I are going to arrange about the explosives, and you stay here and watch the yard, all right? That's mine. I meant what I said, darling, so don't get any ideas about taking a walk, huh? Is that clear? All right. 
Come on. How can you be sure she will run? She'll run just as soon as she thinks we're far enough away. Don't you worry. Oh, beautiful. Yes, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm sorry, miss, you cannot go aboard. I must. I'm sorry, but... I've got to see King Fedor or Robert Drummond. It's impossible. Miss Dudham, friend of yours? Well, not yet, but I'm sure we can work out something. I've got to speak to you both. It's about your uncle. Hello? Everybody safely aboard. Drummond, come here a minute, will you? The fuse has been successfully lit. Interesting to speculate just where on her person you could possibly have hidden the bomb. Now, isn't it just? Your move, I think. It sounds a bit far-fetched to me. Of course, it's true. Every word of it. Ekman and Penelope are arranging about the bomb right now. You've no idea what sort of a bomb? They wouldn't tell me. Let's assume for a moment what she says is true. The question is, what do we do? Get the hell out of here before they come back. Right. Captain! See you around, I hope. Hey! Where are you going? Well, as long as we're believing her, I'd better get up to the castle and lend a hand. He strikes me as being extremely capable. Helpless as a babe without me around. <laughs> They'll keep you from being lonely. Well, what about you? You must be joking. Tell me, how are you planning to dispose of me? Hmm? Oh, an underwater swim. Ekman, Penelope, and you. The only trouble is that you've forgotten to check your air tanks. King's Bishop Pawn to King's Bishop Three. Come on, Drummond. It's your move. Hmm? I said it was your move. Then I better make it. Gambit, eliminate your opponent's knight. Your move, Peterson. Black Queen's knight is taken. Peterson, you only get seven with a Beretta. Black King's Bishop's Pawn to King's Bishop Four.
Black Queen's pawn to Queen Six. Black Queen to King Four. White Castle to King Four. White Bishop to King Four. Black King to King Four. private party or can anyone join in? Be my guest! What shall I do with it? Nasty little girl. Down the black hole. Give me a hand with this vision. That's heavy. Well, that ought to keep the little darlings quiet for a while. Well, I'm glad to see that Grace and the King are hitting it off. It must be her explosive personality. <laughs> Time's at 12. We've got five minutes. about, Mr. Drummond. This girl is due to blow up in about two minutes. So where is he? I don't know. Honestly. I do. Lover. You won't get anything out of her. Here, catch this. Give me the other one. No time for modesty. They've got away. We'll worry about them later. Huh? Sorry about this. Hope you can swim. One, two, three, and up she goes. And up she goes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Incidentally, where was it? In her chignon. Chignon? Well, you know, a false hairpiece up there. Clever, wasn't it? It couldn't be. It was nicer than mine, so I changed them over. Where's it now? I'm wearing it! You what? That's what comes of letting success go to your head. Help! 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 
I'll go. No, I'll go. Help! She whispers, oh, such pretty lies. Don't believe her. For when you look into her eyes, 